Uh, so, uh, I'm going to present you a study about the total ionizing dose influence on the single event effect sensitivity on active uh, E3 components. So, during space applications, devices are subject to TID and SEE at the same time. But the port radiation qualification process includes ionizing dose and SEE tests performed independently. So the question is then, uh, are, could there be any synergetic effect between the dose and the SEE on the electronic devices? So this study was proposed by the European Space Agency and all developments were performed by TRAD. Uh, so this study started in July 2014 and it ended in uh, July 2015. And was, uh, it was a collaboration between our radiation testing and our radiation engineering departments. So before getting to the study, just some interesting, interesting numbers for you to have an overview. So for this study, we procured uh, 400 parts. We tested 280 devices. Uh, 214 of them were delayed for a heavy ion test. We performed 145 hours of heavy ion beam test. Then uh, 18 weeks of uh, cobalt-60 irradiation, and uh, during the cobalt-60 irradiation, 88 devices were measured at each cobalt-60 step. So this is the actual plan of the presentation. So first, I'll begin with the component selection. Then I'll present you the campaign organization with the test plan principle and all the parameters we monitored. Then I'll get to the results analysis with um, what synergy effects we expected. And then I'll present you one case analysis of uh, one effect uh, we were searching. And then in the conclusions, I present you uh, all, the, um, all the results. So let's begin with the device selection. So first, we had to select devices uh, for the study that should be sensitive to TID. So uh, enough to display parameter drift, but not too much to remain uh, functional during the whole campaign. And those devices should also be sensitive to SEE with a lead threshold uh, high enough to, um, to observe a potential drift towards zero and uh, also a saturated cross-section low enough to measure a potential increase. So based on the publication and our TRAD test database, we uh, selected four different devices we choose to have uh, different functions, manufacturers, and technology, and we came up with those four. So the ID9042 from analog device, which is a 12-bit ADC. The AD558 from analog devices also, which is an 8-bit uh, DAC. The MT29 from Micron, which is a 4 gigabit NAND flash. And the L1RW from Renesas, which is a 4 megabit SRAM. So with our components selected, we made a test plan beginning with uh, step zero, which is a pre-characterization test. Uh, that means we performed a preliminary TID test and SEE test, separated just at the standard test procedure. And the results of this uh, step gives us a point of comparison as the initial device's uh, sensitivity in front of TID and SEE. And this results will serve us uh, for the comparison for the actual combined TID and SEE test. So for this uh, test, we put uh, ports under cobalt-60 irradiation. So 40 ports per, uh, per reference, half BS on and the over half BS off. And then at each cobalt-60 uh, step, we took 10 ports per reference out. We perform parametric measurements, so the TID uh, measurements, and then uh, SCE uh, testing on at least three uh, devices based on and two based off. So uh, this, uh, this type of, um, so this step is repeated for each TID uh, step until the final step, which was uh, 150 kilorad for all the forenses except the flash devices, which ended at 100 uh, kilorad. So uh, now I'll get to the, um, so to monitor the, um, the drifts of the, of the parameters, we came up with two types of benches per reference. So the first one, a TID test bench to measure electrical parameters of the, of the parts. 
So the idea is to measure uh, the uh, electrical parameters and then uh, plot them um, versus the total ionizing dose level to uh, observe the drift. The second uh, test bench is the SCE test bench on which we perform dynamic functional testing in order to observe uh, the single event effect. So the aim is to count all of them and then to plot the SEE rate versus the ion let, then the cross section. So uh, just get a short word about the SEE we expected. So the first point is that um, in this study we didn't focus on latch up. Um, we did uh, implement a detection and the protection in all cases because it's quite a critical, uh, critical uh, point and it's a difficulty. But uh, we weren't focused on that. So I'll begin with the memory testing. So what, ca what can happen in uh, memories when you're testing uh, with heavy ions is that can, there can be upsets in the memory cell. So regarding one memory address, if there is only one uh, upset, we will call it a single event upset. And for any other number of upsets, we will call it a multiple bit upset. So that will be all for the SRAM memory, but for the flash memory, its uh, architecture is more complex. And therefore, there can be also um, more function in the state controller leading to a single event functional interrupt. And also, uh, in some cases, uh, Complete functional failure can also occur on this part. So then for the converter, also we can monitor uh, output conversions upsets, uh, NCU. But what can also happen is that it, um, you can encounter uh, analog conversion transients. So that will be a SCT. And also there can, uh, the type main circuits can be stuck leading to a surface. So that will be al almost the same for the DAC one, except that as the output is only uh, digital, uh, is only analog, we can only uh, monitor SCT, not SEU. So uh, with all these uh, monitored parameters, we listed several points that um, of external parameters that can have an impact on our study, such as the annealing effect, the long time test bench stability and also the long time open conditions of the deleted devices. So this, all these effects could have an impact on our, on our study and the aim was to limit this impact. So for the annealing effect, for example, we choose to use the same facility for the TID and the SE testing, which was the UCL, Université Catholique de Louvain in Belgium. For the over two part, uh, points, we uh, did perform additional measurements, so TID and SCE measurements, on a uh, reference control port. And with these additional measurements, we would monitor any possible degradation due to the external, uh, these external parameters and therefore subtract it from a possible synergy effect. So what are uh, the synergy effects we expected? In fact, uh, we we search if the total ionizing dose would have uh, an effect on the SE sensitivity, on the SE error bars, or if the bias condition during the TID also has uh, the same impact, or uh, finally, if the TID would have an impact of, on all the events, uh, the, the single events signature. So uh, we did perform all this analysis uh, for all the references, and now I'll present you just one case because we're short in time and I will only present you the impact of the ionizing dose on the SEE signature. So the aim is to identify if this impact would have, uh, if, this, uh, if the TID has the impact on this signature and then on the input of the radiation analysis. So this, uh, I will only present you the impact for the DAC 8558. Uh, so uh, we did uh, perform SEE with a constant digital input and uh, we expected a constant uh, digital uh, old analog output around 0 0.5 volts. And we observed three kinds of uh, different SET signatures. So positive ones, negative ones, and double ones. So the test results have been processed in order to evaluate if the dose level could have any impact on this signature, means in repartition, time duration, voltage amplitude. So these are the results for the uh, positive signature. So on the left is a plot with all the uh, events uh, logged. 
Uh, this axis is the voltage amplitude. Uh, I don't see there. The over axis, ah, I don't see the, the light. So the over axis is the time uh, amplitude and the different colors are the different dose levels beginning with zero from the purple one to 150 kilowatt for the red one. And as we can see, there aren't notable differences between those, uh, those repartition. On the left side, on the right side is uh, all the cross section for the positive events. So the top one is the one for the reference control part, so the non-irradiated part, which, use, uh, which was used for the monitoring of the external parameters, so the deleted condition. So as we can see, there aren't notable uh, differences between all the, uh, all the control parts, and uh, we can conclude that the deleted condition has no impact on this uh, SCE signature. So when we look at the bottom one, which is the one uh, for all the devices uh, radiated of the, the uh, different uh, dose levels, we can also see that there's on no, there are no uh, different, uh, no differences for the different uh, dose steps. So we performed this analysis for the positive signature and the same analysis was performed for the negative and the double one and we concluded that there were no impact of the TID level, whatever, uh, whatever, no, there was no impact on the NCE signature, whatever the TID level was. So as a conclusion, so we did, uh, so we did this study on uh, the four different devices. Just again, a reminder for you to have uh, an overview of all the data that was, uh, that was to be treated. And we came to the following conclusion. So first, uh, for the external parameters, we did not find any impact of the deleting uh, on the long time open condition on the TID degradation, nor on the SE sensitivity. And our test bench did have a good stability. That means that all the external parameters were okay, and then we could perform the further analysis in the search for the synergy effects. And we'll get to the conclusion. So for the four references, we did not find any impact of the TID on the SCE sensitivity regarding the weighable parameters or the error. We did not find also any impact of the TID on the SCE signature, so on the SCT shape as I presented you, but also on the SCU bit localization for the memories or the MAU multiplicity. And this was also the case for the bias condition. So uh, for these four references, up to 150 kilorad and 100 uh, kilorad for the flash ones, we did not find any impact of the TID on the SEE. So that's all, but as perspectives, we thought that uh, there were some points that could benefit further investigations. For example, we can perform synergy studies on other different devices type, such as uh, MOSFETs, and consider other single event effects, such as single event burnouts and single event gate ruptures, which are critical in space application. We can also perform um, the same kind of synergy study, but with total non-ionizing dose induced by proton. And finally, maybe uh, perform the complete opposite study and uh, study if the SCE would have uh, an, an impact on the TID degradation. Uh, so the final point is about the NAND flash. So during the study, we found out that NAND flash uh, had a particular behavior versus avion, and we thought that uh, this type of devices could benefit further investigations uh, on the radiation, on its radiation effects. So that's all for me. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions.